and welcome to Phasmophobia. This is a video that is going to teach you how to play the game without spoiling too much about what makes Phasmophobia fun. If you are someone who's tried to play it before and you couldn't get into it because you were confused about what to do, or you're looking to get into the game and you want to hit the ground running, but you don't want to be told every little nuance and watch a two hour long video on every little thing about the game, this video is for you. I'm basically going to give you a basic game plan of how to get started and then let you go from there. So what are we gonna do first? Well, first, welcome to the lobby. This is where you will play before going in. I'm going to pretend as if I only have the starting equipment, so we're going to limit the scope of things that we're going to have. We're gonna come over here and play on intermediate difficulty. If you are first starting out, you may be very inclined to play on amateur, but I would highly recommend to just play on intermediate. And the first thing I will tell you is that the entire point of Phasmo, at least mechanically, is to make money. And you will notice that the reward here is times two and the reward on amateur is times one. And as someone who's played this a long time, the difference between amateur and intermediate is almost imperceptible. I would highly recommend just playing on intermediate. If you do play on amateur, that is fine. You'll, you'll have fun. But if you're expecting to make any progress at all, it's going to take way longer. Now, additionally, the items uh, may be a little bit confusing. You may see some things on here that you don't have in your game, and that is okay. The big thing to know about this is that you have very many slots for loadouts. I would highly recommend you just take one, select it to auto buy and auto add, and then just add in each of the things you want. You will always start with these pieces of equipment. They are necessary in order to figure out the ghosts, at least when you're first starting. So they will always give you at least these things to start with. Everything else is extra. Uh, for right now, all I'm going to do is just go in with the starter stuff so that we can only focus on just that. And with that, I'm going to come over here. In your game, you may not have all of the properties unlocked, so we're gonna start with Tanglewood Drive. We're gonna ready up and start. So every run of Phasmophobia basically has a little flow chart I follow in order to feel comfortable with where I am in that operation. The first thing that we're going to do is find the breaker and turn it on. Having the breaker on is incredibly helpful for multiple reasons. One, it warms up the house. And when the house is warmed up, that means the only places that are cold are places where the ghost is. So you can more easily find the ghost. Two, you can turn lights on. And turning lights on in the house can preserve your sanity, which helps you avoid getting killed by the ghost. So the first thing we're gonna do, knowing that, is come over here to our map. You get a map of the property on the screen and you can look through different floors of it with these buttons here. And you can look at the layout and one of the things you'll notice is down here in the basement, we can see the little electrical symbol for the breaker. So when we need to turn the breaker on, we know it's there. Secondly, we want to take equipment with us that helps us locate the ghost. Several of these things here are only useful once you know where the ghost already is. Like this little writing book. The ghost can't do anything with it when it's in our hands and walking around, so it doesn't really help a whole lot. We definitely want to have a flashlight, which you can activate in your hand or if it's put away with T by default. And now we're going to grab some things to help out finding the ghost. We're going to get this EMF reader, kind of looks like a Geiger counter. And we're going to get this thermometer. And with that, we're going to now head on in. You can see we have a sanity meter, an activity meter. These are for sound sensors and these are our objectives. But for right now, we're just going to focus on getting a few things done. One, we're going to turn on the breaker. Two, we're going to find the ghost. So let's do that. Grab the key, left click on the ski pad to open the door. Note that the weather is foggy, so it's going to be hard to see. Now this EMF reader isn't turned on. If it's on, you will see the little lights. So we need that and we turn our flashlight on. We know that the breaker is in the basement. So we're going to go straight to the breaker and turn it on. That way the house can start warming up and it'll be easier to find where the ghost is. While we're walking around, try to take note of places that you can hide. Here in the basement, this little plywood setup is a great place to hide. So as a little note to myself on where a good hiding spot is, I'm going to turn the light on here. And that way, 
if I ever need to run to a hiding spot, I can just go to where I've left lights turned on. And now what we do is we walk around and listen very carefully to hear if we hear any sounds of the ghost. You'll hear little thuds of items being thrown, maybe the sound of a door being opened, which I think I just heard. Obviously you want to have headphones on and to have the volume turned up. There are some ambient noises. Oh. Hear the Geiger counter going off? Oh, and I just heard the sound of a door opening. So we know the general area of the ghost. It touched this, so I'm going to put this thermometer out. You can see that the temperature is going up here, so it's probably not here. Let's go into the nursery room. Oh, and you can see it's now going back down. So it's probably a ghost that's in the nursery room. If the temperature's going down, that doesn't necessarily mean it's there. It just probably is. So now I'm going to turn this light on. So again, we preserve our sanity. We're going to head back out to the van and grab some more stuff. Once you know where the ghost is, you want to try to get all of your evidence collecting stuff in there as soon as you can. We're going to get our UV. And I'm going to get the notepad in there. The longer you are on a property, and the more you interact with the ghost, the lower your sanity hits. Oh. This radio is turned on. You can hear it making a little buzzy noise. I'll turn that off. Which means our ghost might be here. It might be in any of these rooms, and it's just moving between them. So, oh. Our first piece of evidence. I've now pulled out my UV sensitive glow stick and you can see there were handprints on these doors. So whenever you find a piece of evidence you will open up your journal and come in and select what you think it is. So I've got ultraviolet set and you'll notice that it grayed out a whole bunch of the ghosts here. Once you have three pieces of evidence in most situations that will let you know what the ghost is. Now, I just saw my breath in here, which lets you know that it is very cold. So I still think it's this room, but the fact that that radio over there moved means that this ghost might be wandering around a lot. Oh, look at that, just threw that really hard. And it touched that door again. So what I'm looking at right now is to see if we get EMF level 5. This one's going up to 4, but it's not quite going to 5. Now I'm going to put this notepad down. For me, it's F to place down an object, so I'm going to place that there. And reveal, once again, this door has been touched, so you can see. Oh! <gasps> Look at that. And now we have ghost writing. Just scribbled in that a whole bunch. So now we can open this up and get our ghost writing. We've now limited it down to these three different ghosts. I'm glad that if it's a demon, we haven't already been eaten, but we'll worry about that later. Oh! All right, so we need to get our last piece of evidence and we'll know which ghost that we're dealing with. Let's come out here. We've only got a couple things left. You can see that the ghost is being very active. We have lost a bit of sanity here. I don't think we're going to be doing either of those objectives, but let's see what we can do now. I'm going to get this dots pen and this spirit box. The spirit box admittedly is probably one of the most difficult things to use in the game, just because you have to talk to the ghost and uh, sometimes the voice activation is a little bit weird. If you come in here into your game settings, you'll see voice recognition mode. There is VOSC, Windows, and Text. If you are ever having a problem with Phasmo not picking up your questions, you can always go to Text and just ha manually select the questions you want to ask. And if you want to know what the valid questions you can ask the ghost are, just come over here to the Text mode and you can see what's on the list. So let's go inside. I'm going to open this up. 
Look at this. Where are you? Behind them. And there we go. It answered me. If you ever select it and this red light comes on, that means it recognized the question you asked, but you didn't get a response. If it lights up white, then that means that the ghost responded. So even if you don't actually hear it, you can, just, you can know what happened there. So with that, and I just right click to activate it and right click to stop. With that, we now know that this is a poltergeist. We got our three pieces of evidence, which narrows it down to just one ghost. And now we can pretty much leave. We can worry about figuring out how to do all the different evidences, maybe in another video. But since this is a beginner, this is exactly what you want to do. Come into the house, turn on the breaker, turn on a few lights, find some hiding spots in case things get dicey so that you can run to them, and then try to get all of your evidence collecting stuff in there and leave. If you're playing in a mission and things get really dire, say your friends die, you're at low sanity, things are, are looking really bad, it's never an awful option to just leave. Again, the whole point is to make money, mechanically speaking, the whole point is to make money, and you lose money if you die and lost equipment. Uh, you do get a little bit money back on the lower settings with insurance, but ultimately you will make more money if you just leave and uh, come back on a, another day and start again. It's not terrible. It does feel a little bit bad, but take a guess on which one. If you've collected some evidence and you're not quite sure, uh, just make a guess on it and go and then come back again. There's no shame in that. In this case, we know it's a poltergeist. We even got an additional objective done, so we're going to get a little bit more money, which means a little bit more experience. And look at that. We figured it out. And that's all you really got to do. Game plan. Go inside, turn on the breaker, find the ghost, drop all of your evidence stuff near where the ghost is, and then check off what you've got and you're good to go. Everything else after that is just a bonus and you'll be well on your way to becoming a ghost investigator. If this video helped you at all, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more of this in the future, subscribe. If you have your own tips, tricks, or questions for me, leave them down in the comments. But until next time, remember to take care of yourself and take care of those around you. Bye-bye.